Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the last webinar of season two, which is mad, so mad. What a year it's been. So to have two seasons of webinars, that's crazy. But this is the last one, which is crazy. So I hope that these sessions have become a little bit of a part of your uh, your morning schedules on, on Tuesday mornings for these last few weeks and months. But thank you all so much for being here throughout the course of all this time. I've really enjoyed um, these past two weeks. Two weeks ago, we asked you for your podcast recommendations. Last week, we asked you for your book recommendations. So down in the chat area, uh, where I can see so many good mornings uh, come already, uh, I think you should, uh, well, it would be nice if you would take a moment to recommend people to follow. So people online, whether it's on Twitter, LinkedIn, or whatever, who you get a lot of value from. Um, so please do take the time to, to recommend a few of those people. Um, today, our guest is Kirsty Smith. Uh, Kirsty has a few different hats. She's the director of uh, marketing director of Digital Cake, which is a holistic e-commerce agency. Uh, she's the founder of Social Circle, uh, which is an amazing um, monthly social media meetup group, um, which I've sort of like been tangentially watching from the side and, and sort of watching with nothing but admiration and she's also a lecturer at Birmingham City University. This is actually a third time uh, we've had Kirsty speak uh, so the first time was in Birmingham secondly in London and uh, you know both times she's been nothing but amazing which is why it's so so great to be able to invite her back. Um, Kirsty actually first came to my attention through um, my right-hand man on everything marketing meetup and, and one of my best friends in the entire world, uh, James Sandbrook. Uh, so I'd really recommend for, for my part on someone to, uh, to follow, then uh, James is mine. So uh, do take the time to uh, seek him out too. Um, all in all, all I can say is that um, the emotions and, and sort of images that, that come into mind when I think about Kirsty are, are one of uh, being just very impressed generally, but also inspired. Uh, she takes the time to really make Social Circle in particular sing. And even though her day job at Digital Cake no doubt keeps her really busy, then she provides an unbelievable service for the marketing community in general. Today's session is relevant because social media is changing all the time. That's it. <laughs> so, um, so hopefully by the end of today's session, you will, uh, you'll hear a lot more about stuff that's been going on and also have the opportunity to implement that into your own strategies. This being 2020, we're now getting a uh, dustbin lorry come outside my uh, window right now. So if that's what you hear, that's what that is. Um, today's session will run as a, a presentation and then a Q&A. Um, so please do get your questions in nice and early uh, and we'll try and get those answered. And also don't forget to use the thumbs up feature. Uh, that enables us to find the questions that the most people want answered and, uh, and get them sorted too. Finally, 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 uh, I wanna thank two groups of people. So the first is everyone that sat here today uh, watching. It's like, it's such a weird life to be able to do this, but in such a positive way. And I feel just so lucky to be surrounded by all of you. So thank you all so, so much for, for being here today and, and sort of engaging with everything we're doing. It's truly done for you, but you know, it, it's amazing that people choose to engage. So thank you. Um, and then the second group is of course the sponsors and, and those of you who are regulars will know that I do this on the regular, but you know, at the same point, it's so, so important to make sure that they get their dues. Um, as we come towards the end of season two, every one of them, even, you know, from the point of COVID kicking off to right now, every one of them has stood by our side and sort of said, we want to continue uh, engaging with this community, which is incredible. Um, I, I don't spend half an hour going through the sponsors uh, in this session because um, we're here for Kirsty and we're here for you. So I, I say, you know, please take a sec to look at the email that I sent you before this session started and also the email which I'll send as a follow up, which will have some resources from Kirsty too. Um, just to say thank you. And it's as simple as that just to say thank you to them and, um, you know, give them the due that they deserve. 
So very quickly from me, I just want to say thank you to Content Cal, Pitch, Fiverr, Redgate, Cambridge Martin College, Lidu, Brand, Further, Third Light, Bravo and Human. You got them in the email before, you got them in the email afterwards. Please take a moment to say thank you. So uh, with all that said, that's my introduction over with. Um, so we're now going to be passing over to the lovely Kirsty um, and thank you all very much for being here. Thanks, Joe. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Should I go ahead and share my screen? Absolutely, go for it. Kirsty is sharing via Canva, everyone, which is quite impressive. So uh, we've been messing around with that this morning just before everything went live. So no, it wasn't stressful at all, was it? <laughs> <laughs> we got there. We got there. That's the most important there. thing. So, <laughs> so over to you, Kirsty. Thank you, Joe, and thank you for those kind words. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. And um, I should say that it was easy to pull this together because with Social Circle happening every month and we're catching up on all the new advancements in social media, I thought, great, I'll go back through my last, you know, this year's worth of content. But actually the hardest part was, was whittling it down to 20. <clears throat> so I do have 20 topics to talk to everybody about today. And um, I am also, that's a good point, going to start my timer because I know we haven't got an infinite amount of time today. So I'm going to go fairly quickly through these. And like Joe mentioned at the end, I'm going to share a list of a link to all my resources. So if there's anything anybody wants to further research, then they can, can use that list. So this is where my slides fail me. Hello everybody, I'm Kirsty. Um, as Joe mentioned, I am the marketing director of an e-commerce agency up here in Birmingham called Digital Cake. And we look after a handful of fashion, uh, lifestyle brands predominantly. Um, and also I am the co-founder of Social Circle. So I've got my Social Circle hat on today and I am going to be coming at this from a social media marketing point of view. Social Circle is a collaborative of digital marketers and social media enthusiasts that come together every month, like Joe said. Now this was born out of the four ladies that you can see on the screen right now. When I left my previous agency, we all wanted to still meet up to talk about all the new things in social Social media. So as geeky as it sounds, every month we'd go and meet at the pub for a glass of wine and we'd all discuss our clients and what was happening because we wanted to stay connected and learn from each other. One afternoon or evening, I should say, after a couple of glasses, we said, this is so valuable. Let's open this up and just invite other people to the pub. So um, the function room upstairs in the pub just went bold straight up to John at my local and said, can we use that room upstairs? And he was like, yep, three weeks time. And I was like, brilliant. And Social Circle was born and um, it's grown from strength to strength. We now have over a thousand social media marketers in our community, but the premise still stays the same. We get together every month and we discuss all the new happenings in social media. So um, my life before Digital Cake and Social Circle, I've actually been in digital marketing for around 10 years, which makes me old in this industry. And I've always been in social media, but purely because it was always that digital channel that everyone was a bit scared of. And I fell into it by accident, really, because I just had a, passionate for, um, a passion for engaging with people and um, just jumping on all the new innovations and moving quite quickly. So in my previous life, I worked for big leisure retail brands and looked after communities around the size of 5 million, dealing with 20,000 mentions a month, not on my own, but with a team of 10 people. So I'm used to big communities, but I'm also used to small communities as well. But enough about me. Today, um, I'm going to be chatting about 20 new things that's that have happened in social media this year. Well, I say this year, but I'm actually just going to do March onwards because so much has happened in lockdown. The social channels have reacted really quickly to the pandemic and the amount of new functionality that has come onto the channels over the last six months has been pretty incredible. So I'm just going to be talking through new functionality, a couple of new platforms that I think people should be aware of and new ones to consider, and then a couple of training and resource opportunities from the platforms as well. So in three minutes in, I'm going to keep going. So the first one, a lovely update from Instagram. They now allow you to pin comments. 
So this was tested back in May and it should be a universal tool now. So everybody has this. Now, essentially what this does is once you've posted onto your Instagram feed and people start commenting, it allows you to pin the top three comments or you can pin up to three comments that almost act um, like a little bit Twitter when you, like, like on Twitter when you, you pin a tweet, it allows people to see those comments first. Now, I think this can be really useful for sharing informative information, or if you've had a really positive comment, for instance, or somebody Insta famous has commented on your post, then it's just a really nice function to be able to share that comment. I think that with so much negativity happening on the channels, this is just a way of heroing the positive, and I just think it's a, a lovely update from Instagram. I also realized the other day that you can't mute people on Instagram. You can only delete comments. So you can turn your comments completely off, which I would never really recommend. It's always good to see the negative comments and reply to them. Um, and you can, you can delete them, but unfortunately you can't mute. So this is a nice way to, to counteract that. The next one is Instagram, it's coming soon. So some people may have seen this, but they've launched or oh, they've announced a personal fundraising functionality, which is a tool that lets users raise money for personal causes. So Instagram, which is obviously owned by Facebook, said that since January, now this was in about June time, that um, people have raised over $100 million for COVID related um, uh, so COVID related causes across Facebook and Instagram. So they do have a sticker where on Instagram stories where you can donate and there's a number of um, charitable causes that are registered, but this actually allows you to apply for your own personal fundraiser. So the company has described it as raise money for personal causes like yourself, your small business, a friend, or a cause that's important to you. So like I mentioned, you do have to be 18 and you do have to apply for this. But once you've applied for it, um, you can set it up and run it through your Instagram channel. Um, another really positive move from Instagram this year. I'm moving on number three to um, the first new platform that I would like to talk about. Now, this one is called Google Shop Loop. Okay, so I've spent a little bit of time um, on this platform and I'm finding it really hard to understand how it's a social network. It feels like it's just a way of selling. And Google have been quite upfront about this and actually said that it's a mixture of video and commerce, entertainment and commerce, and social and commerce. But really interestingly, you can't actually buy through it yet. So it is essentially a little bit like TikTok. You can share videos of up to 90 seconds and creators create these on behalf of a brand. Um, and uh, you watch the video, it includes the products and then you click through and purchase the products on the, on the merchant store. Um, really interesting move from, from Google here. Whilst researching this, I found that it was also developed by um, area 120, which is Google's in-house incubator. So another top tip there, if you are interested in all the new platforms and what's coming from Google, then make sure you're, you're following um, the, this area 120. Interestingly as well, it's not an app, so you can only access it on mobile, but it's not currently an app. But I think like um, Hannah from Social Chain mentioned the other day, if a social channel is new or there's some new functionality, just get on it. I would suggest if you're a brand, go on, claim your, claim your handle, claim your name, um, and just make sure you've got a presence on this. I do have a little, if it works, just one minute video to explain a little bit more about Shoploop. So let me just play this for you guys.
interested to hear people's thoughts on this. Is it another case of Google Plus? Um, I'm not sure if this platform will go anywhere, but a really interesting one to watch. Very similar to, you know, TikTok. I'm just not quite sure that people are going to go over to here just to be sold to. But if you are a creator or you're a brand, particularly in the beauty space, nails, beauty, hair, then I would suggest it's something that you look into. Right, moving on, Snapchat is growing up. Now, for the first time ever, Snapchat um, have uh, launched an ability for brands to have their own almost like landing page within the Snapchat app. So um, this feature has, let me just check my notes. There's only selected brands that this ro has rolled out to so far, and it's the big guys. It's the Ben and Jerry's, Dior, which is here, Gucci, Headspace, Kylie Cosmetics, L'Oreal, um, and Louis Vuitton, to name a few. I think there's 20 brands that they're testing this on at the moment, but they're saying by the end of the year, this is going to be available to everybody. I can't believe it's taken Snapchat this long to allow brands to have a different profile to um, just the normal consumer profiles. So I, I struggle with Snapchat for a lot of my brands because it's here today, gone tomorrow. The Snapchat content is story content. It lasts for 24 hours and there isn't really anywhere that you can house your content. So this, I think, is a really, really good move from Snapchat. So what it allows, essentially, it's a landing page. It allows you to house your branded video content, your AR lenses, as well as a virtual in-app storefront for those brands that work for Shopify. So if you are in the e-commerce space, um, or even if you, you're not, I would definitely say keep an eye on this and make sure, again, if you haven't already claimed your brand profile, your uh, brand handle, that you make sure you get on and do that. Right, Pinterest. Now, Pinterest has been a platform that I've not really shown too much interest in, but it's really come back onto my radar in lockdown. They're really making some advancements on the platform. One of them, Hello, they've introduced stories because every social platform seems to have a story functionality. I couldn't seem to replicate the stories function on, on my own Pinterest, but do have a look because it is one of the things that Pinterest are really pushing at the moment. So they made some updates to their algorithm this year. And um, I have summarized those key takeaways on the next slide of things you need to know if you're using Pinterest. Also just to pin point out with Pinterest, I love this term pinners of planners because a lot of clients when I talk to them or brands when I talk to them about Pinterest, I try to describe it as a hybrid between Facebook and Google. Um, it is, they, they call themselves a, a, a visual search engine. They're not really a social network. People are going to Pinterest to show intent. They're going there to search. They're going there to find, and they're going there for inspiration. They're not necessarily looking to purchase straight away, but they are showing intent when they go to Pinterest. So it is a really good channel to make sure you at least have a, a presence on. Um, if even if it isn't going to be, you know, if you are in e-commerce, you won't expect those conversions straight away, but they will come. So the key takeaways from the algorithm updates this year are to make sure, and all the social networks say this, don't they? Make sure you're sharing video content. And um, so video was their number one key takeaway, video, 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 but please do not reshare video content that you're creating for other networks. It needs to be um, natural and work with the Pinterest environment. They've also said, now I am, I always do this. I'm like, oh, Pinterest, um, completely forgot about it. New collections launched, go and pin everything. Or, oh, we haven't been on Pinterest for a month. Let's pin all the new blog posts from our site. Wrong, wrong. They say that drip feeding your pins is a much better strategy. So, Put it, put it in your calendar every other day, go into Pinterest and um, pin every day or at least once a week rather than a bulk upload. And then the third thing to look out for is this new functionality, which is the, which is the um, story content, which I've just mentioned. Right, who remembers Vine? 
Joe's nodding, hands up. Vine was the six second video looping app, which was purchased by Twitter and then unfortunately um, died a sad death a few years ago. Well, um, Vine is back and it's now called Byte. So Byte launched in January and it didn't really get much traction until around March, April time when there was a load of rumors about TikTok being um, shut down in America. And all of the creators had a panic and were worried about their presence on TikTok and moved over to Vine. Sorry, they didn't move over to Vine, they moved over to Byte. So um, Byte, essentially, it's a six second video looping app. So very similar to Vine, but it has elements of social networking. So you can follow people, you can comment, you can like, and you can have your own profile, etc. So again, I'm not sure the legs for this one, but I would suggest if you are a business or a brand, move over to buy and just get your handle claimed, just in case it does kick off, it is one to watch. I'm now gonna talk about going live. So going live isn't necessarily on, on Instagram, something that um, has launched over the last six months, but Instagram were, um, quick to move on the functionality they offered with live over the last six months and just before we came on here Joe was saying um, congratulations because in, uh, we moved on to Instagram live really quickly with social circle so Instagram live um, there are a couple of new updates to mention so one of them uh, I can't really I should have changed the screen grab but you can have two people on an Instagram live which I think is quite old functionality but they did allow you to upload slides or images behind you so I've got my colleague Katie here on the right hand side on this image and we've actually were able to um, put in the different innovations that we were going to talk about on social circle behind her picture and when someone else joined you could still see the slide behind so that was quite a nice little new function um, I've just done some top tips or key takeaways for going live because I do feel there's still a real place for this. So a few of these are tips really rather than new innovations, but make sure um, if you are going to go live, you treat it like a proper event. So many people started going live on Instagram during lockdown that whenever I logged on at six o'clock, you know, the top five Instagram highlights were all people going live at the time. So promote it like you would an event. The good thing about it is that when you go live now, it tells you how many of your followers are actually using the app at any one time. So before going live for Social Circle, we could get a sense of what our maximum reach was going to be for that event. Um, so as I mentioned, you can go live with other brands or other pro or personal profiles on Instagram. And it also lets all of their followers know you're going live as well. So you get the double impact. Something that they did put in place, which I was so thankful of, is that as soon as you'd finished going live, it saved your live as an IGTV video because I was pulling my hair out at the time because you could spend an hour, up to an hour being live on Instagram. And if you didn't save that video or download the video into your photo or your videos onto your phone, you'd lose that content forever. And I would, it would just, it would be killing me that it would be here today, gone tomorrow. So I think around July, August time, they just started to let you save those lives into IGTV. One final thing on this, when I was looking at Facebook and live capabilities, Facebook portal. Now I'm not gonna talk about Facebook portal today, but it shouldn't be one, it should be something that's on everybody's radar. So Facebook portal is Facebook's um, home video speaker. Um, uh, and it's an actual piece of hardware as well. So you get almost like an iPad to use. You can go live on Portal. I don't know how many people are doing it, but uh, I thought it was probably worth noting. I don't know if you saw the TV ads for that, but uh, it also has a smart camera. So you could be live. And if I was going live now and I was moving around the room, it would follow you around. So just interesting stuff. Okay, gonna keep going. How am I doing for time? Not too bad. Instagram Reels. So Instagram Reels in a nutshell is pretty much a ripoff of TikTok. So um, Instagram has always been notorious, well Facebook's always been notorious for looking at what the other social networks are doing and building on that functionality, should we say, or stealing, not stealing, I shouldn't say stealing, borrowing from some of those advancements and bringing them over to their own platform. 
So Instagram Reels was launched this summer. It's a new way to record a 15 second video clip set to music. Look familiar, sound familiar? Yes, because it's pretty much exactly the same as TikTok. Um, so there's five things to know. If you haven't used Reels, this is essentially what it can do for you. I've just taken a few notes for this. So the functionality, oh, I wish I had that dog, the sound on for that dog, because he looks so cute. The functionality allows for audio. So it allows you to search songs in the Instagram library or use your own audio. It allows you to pick AR effects again from the Instagram library. It allows a timer and a countdown so you can record hands free. You can then align your video, so objects or clips from your previous clips and align them together for like a seamless transaction. And then finally, you can slow down or speed up your reels as well to make a 15 second video. So a few weeks back, this is hot off the press, um, Instagram made some updates to the Reels feature because it did come under a little bit of criticism um, and it didn't really gain too much traction, I think because everybody was already used to TikTok at this time and didn't then want to duplicate their content or move it over to another platform. So Instagram have actually announced that they're going to make Reels longer. So they're 15 seconds at the moment, but for creators, if you have a creator account, they're going to let them go up to 30 30 seconds. Um, so the Instagram Reels director has said, we continue to improve uh, Reels based on people's feedback and these updates will make it easier to create and edit. While we're still early, we're seeing lots of entertaining and creative content and we're likely to see more updates to come. So it'd be great to hear afterwards if people are, are using Reels and people are adopting them. Um, and I, I mentioned Hannah twice now, but she mentioned um, she obviously works social chain and has the inside scoop from Facebook. New functionality, they will be giving people reach, you know, it will be getting a lot of cut through. So if you haven't tested out Reels, I would suggest it's something that you should you should get on with and, and start to have a play around with. I'm not going to talk too much about TikTok. Um, Joe, I know you're a huge fan of TikTok and you said you can lose hours in the platform. I'm going to come at TikTok more from a marketing and advertising point of view and just to let everybody know that TikTok have now got a business platform very similar to um, Facebook Business Manager, which allows you to self-serve from an advertising point of view if you're a marketer. So this is fairly new. I want to say that this is a couple of months old. Um, very similar to Ads Manager, like I just mentioned, very intuitive and allows you, um, allows you to set up ads in the same way that you would on Facebook. So you've got the same objectives of reach and awareness, uh, consideration, and then you can drive conversion ads as well with swipe ups to allow people to link directly to your website. Um, so a point on this, I mean, TikTok, if you are a brand, it's a fine line that you've got to tread and you can't just be creating the same adverts that you're sharing on, on Instagram and on Facebook and put them on TikTok. They do need to be fit for purpose. Now, if you're struggling with ideas or not quite sure how to approach um, advertising for TikTok, top tip here, they also have a creator marketplace. So it's just creatormarketplace.tiktok.com and I'll put it in the, in the show notes. But the creator marketplace allows brands and creators to come together to collaborate. So it could be that advertising on TikTok isn't right for your brand, but actually collaborating with a creator on TikTok, someone that natively uses the platform could be a better approach. Facebook shops is the next one I'm going to talk about. Now, this has had us pulling our hair out in the office. Facebook um, obviously owns Instagram and you've been able to link your catalogue feed to your Instagram and your Facebook from your e-commerce store for a while. So users uh, of your Facebook and Instagram have been able to click through, view your product products um, and then click through to your website to make a transaction. But in the very, very near future, rolling out, and it's already in the US, Facebook have launched Facebook Pay, which allows users to purchase, go all the way through and transact through Facebook without actually leaving. Um, 
So within Facebook Business Manager now, you will see an option for Commerce Manager. So if you do sell online, I would suggest that you go and have a look at Commerce Manager. And um, they're rolling out slowly, so it might not yet be, be available for you. But Commerce Manager is going to allow you to have your e-commerce platform, your catalog manager, all of your events in one place. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with what functionality this will bring, um, the shoppable product feed allows a name, an image, and a description that pulls down dynamically from your catalog feed, and it includes the cost and the link. When you have this set up, it also allows you to tag products in your Instagram feed, like this example I've got here. You can also tag products in your Instagram stories, and you're going to be able to work with part in partnerships with creators, and they will also be able to tag your products in their content. So one to read up on, and I will send in the show notes a link to read up all about this. But Facebook Shops is here, um, and it's not going anywhere, and it's just getting stronger. And Facebook Pay is in beta, so don't put your head in the sand. This is definitely something that you should everybody should be looking into right now. So big business e-commerce for the last innovation. The next innovation is actually perfect for those smaller businesses. Facebook over the summer have launched Facebook email. So this is an email service provider for small businesses. Um, I really liked this one. I just thought it makes complete sense. Facebook want to be that one-stop marketing platform for small businesses. They are now allowing uh, if you have an Instagram profile, you don't need to link it to a Facebook page. You can just have an Instagram presence and be boosting posts from there. That also happened this, this summer. But I really like this. So uh, it basically allows you to send your email marketing directly from Facebook. Um, now, it's not as clever as I wanted it to be. I thought that if somebody followed you on Facebook, or they followed your page, it would automatically dynamically pull their their. Um, email through it doesn't do that so you do have to upload your email data obviously from a GDPR point of view make sure you have permission to do that but once you've been out to, once you've done that you can then head to the pages app and it also looks like here it will be available from um, desktop as well as mobile uh, and then you can add your own business uh, email address upload your data, they provide the templates and you can just crack on and send your email straight through Facebook. So a really nice one for small businesses launched this summer. Um, another update this summer from Facebook again, and I say Facebook as in the whole family of apps, is the Facebook Messenger Room functionality. So this essentially is personal video conferencing that can be run through Facebook Messenger, it can be run through WhatsApp. It can be run through, oh, there's me testing it last night, trying to work it out, inviting people to my room and then quite quickly leaving. So this runs through, where well, was like WhatsApp, um, Facebook Messenger itself, Facebook pages and Instagram. And you can, uh, you can um, build a room, uh, launch a room, sorry, invite your friends to it and you can have a video conference. This is really good from a business point of view as well because you can have up to 50 people in your room. So it's um, an alternative to Zoom. You don't need to have a Facebook account to do this. So it does produce a link and you can send that, send somebody a link and it invites people to that room. You've got all the other functionality that Zoom has so you can let people talk. Um, you can put it on presenter mode essentially. So this is Facebook's... Um, quick, I turned this around fairly quickly. I think this was their answer to house party. Um, if anyone remembers house party at the beginning of lockdown, that went away. Messenger rooms is launched. It'd be really interesting to see how businesses do start to adopt this for their video conferences in the future. Taking my time. Okay. Back to Pinterest again. Wow, I'm loving Pinterest this year. So this was really just to let you guys know if you're interested in Pinterest, they have launched a load of new resources in a Pinterest Academy, a little bit like Facebook Blueprint where you can go and learn all about the platform. Pinterest Academy has launched a whole raft of new, really bite-sized, like 10, 15 minute courses to help creators and brands um, with their Pinterest 
with their Pinterest strategy. So new courses include Pinterest narrative, creative inspiration, objectives, targeting and buying. Obviously they want you to be using that ad platform. How to set up a business account, building and launching a campaign, managing and measuring a campaign. So some really nice um, new bite-sized courses from Pinterest here. I'd also say if you are a creator, Pinterest have launched a creator's resource area as well um, and with an Instagram profile to boot as well. So you can follow them there over on Instagram. Now, the creator's profile are just helping creators and linking them with platforms. Uh, they've come out with a number of trusted services and platforms that they're going to partner with, such as Adobe Spark, Canva, yay, PicMonkey and a load of other platforms that they are partnering creators with to help them create creative content for Pinterest. So going back to the algorithm updates that I mentioned earlier and making sure that you Pinterest, your content is relevant, have a look at the creator's resources and see what Pinterest can do to help you in that space. Um, this is my only one from Twitter and I don't know why because I am a big fan of Twitter. Uh, there's been a number of updates over the last few months and Twitter actually, lots of people always say to me, should I still be on Twitter? Is Twitter dead? And uh, it isn't because they had their, they broke their instalment records on the 1st of June. They had over a million new installs the week coming up to the 1st of June, just due to the demand for news. Obviously, we've had some huge big topics, uh, Black Lives Matter, um, everything that's happening with the pandemic. Twitter has really been the place to go to for people are, are still going there for their news. And I really like this new advancement from them. I don't know if anybody has started using this, but you can now create an audio tweet. So I really like this. They've done 140 seconds as well. So you get up to 140 seconds rather than 140 characters to have your say on Twitter. And you can also, like this example here, upload a, an image or you can just have the audio file, um, audio file included. So it'd be great to hear from people if, if and how to use this. I could imagine, you know, comedians or people singing, but I'm sure it's also great for breaking news. If you're on the ground somewhere and you just wanted to report something quickly, then I think this is a lovely advancement from, from Twitter. Moving over to YouTube, I've only got one from YouTube, um, maybe because I'm in the e-commerce space, but I wanted just to touch on the YouTube shoppable ads. So it's a new um, ad format launched by YouTube, and I think this completely makes sense, and I can't believe they've taken this long to do it, but it's now maximizing video campaigns by letting uh, watchers click on and um, marketers develop these ads where you can add your new e-commerce products underneath so you watch the video and then you maximize it and then you can click on the products that are being featured in the video so this is a huge breakthrough for brands especially brands that work with creators so rather than saying oh look at all the links in my comments um, you can now tag those products directly in the ads so i think a smart move from youtube and something that i'm sure lots of people will adopt I love an Instagram sticker. So Instagram stickers, I have got a whole list and these would go in the notes. I love how quickly Instagram moved to develop new stickers during lockdown, especially to support with new business, new business during this um, difficult time. So on Instagram, um, if you're familiar with stories, it allows you to use a, diff a number of stickers that you can pop on your stories to help drive an action. So originally you can at mention people, you can add a location, you can add hashtags, and you can put a countdown clock. And new ones have included, just during the last six months, being able to add a gift card. So great for small businesses that want to maybe, um, who haven't been able to trade on the high street, to be able to offer gift cards um, to their followers is a really nice idea for gifting. Restaurant orders as well. So you do have to be registered with one of the big ones like Deliveroo or Uber Eats, but you can then, um, if you are a small restaurant, um, encourage people to order directly from Instagram stories. You can, there was a small business shout out, which I absolutely loved. Lots of people did follow a Friday anyway. So this allows you to tag other businesses and promote those through your own stories. Um, an option to get people to di direct message you directly from the story, which I loved. 
a donation sticker, which we talked about earlier with the fundraising, and then also the hashtag challenge. So the challenges were happening um, naturally anyway in the platforms and Instagram moved on that quickly. So loads of new stickers to try out. And um, Joe, you're like this one. There's an event reminder coming soon, which can, um, I've seen it in beta and big brands doing it for a new product launch. So you can say, you know, there's a, on Tuesday, we're launching a new product, but it's a really nice way to drive urgency for people signing up for events as well. So that one is in beta and coming soon. So loads of fun stuff to look out for there. Okay, guys, we're nearly there on number 17. And it, again, it's a new platform announcement. And again, it's more stories. So Google really recently, in the last couple of weeks, have introduced a stories feature to its Google app on iOS and on Android. So now users are going to be presented with a carousel of tappable visible stories aka all of the other social media networks and um, it's going to be full screen mode photos and audio and you can then link out there be a swipe up or something similar to link out to publishers content so the stories are integrated into mobile google search and are focused on publishers content the publishers are responsible for um, authoring their stories and they have control to monetize these stories as well um, really big move for Google and uh, just showing the strength of stories. So keep an eye out for that one, everybody. I can't go 20 innovations and not talk about my favorite, which is LinkedIn. I do love a little bit of LinkedIn, but I did feel like I got um, a bit too addicted. So how Joe's addicted to TikTok, I went through a stage of being addicted to LinkedIn and it being like the first social channel I can look, look at in the morning. I'd look at it before my alarm went off, which is really sad, isn't it? So I, I had to step back a little bit from LinkedIn. But um, yay, first time in five years that LinkedIn has had a redesign. So I probably will get back onto LinkedIn just to just to be a part of this and see what's happening. A huge surge of usage in LinkedIn during the pandemic and um, some really cute little updates from them. So on your avatar, on your picture, you've been able to put a message to say you're looking for work, which I thought was a really nice, again, quick move from LinkedIn. They also launched a series of mindfulness courses, which I don't know if anyone's come across. I didn't think it was worth the slide because I wasn't sure if I'd really go to LinkedIn to help with my stress. <laughs> um, but uh, so they've also done um, some extra training resources around mindfulness in the workplace. But the biggest one is going to be this, uh, the, the redesign. So the chief marketing and communications officer has said uh, a warmer and more human experience while also helping users to navigate more easily to find jobs, people, skills and content they want and to bring the community at the forefront and to highlight the members who are helping, informing and inspiring each and every day. So I'm really liking that as a, as a vision statement for, for LinkedIn. And um, I'm excited to see what this redesign brings. And I've put stories, obs, because as well as this, Instagram stories, which have been rumored to be launching for the last couple of years, and I think they went into to beta for college students in the US. Um, they've introduced the story feature in the Canada and US for everybody. So something that we should be keeping our eye on because it will be coming soon. Again, it's going to be full screen experience on mobile and they're only going to last for 24 hours. I do love a story. So I think my return to LinkedIn will be as soon as they come on. Um, I'm gonna get moving onto that straight away. Okay, coming up to the end of the innovations i'm just checking my time this one is hot off the press and i've tried to squidge two really big innovations together for this this has been rumored for a while but all of the facebook family of apps are going to bring their messaging services together um i'm worried about this because I get a lot of messages anyway. I just can't see how this is going to work. I don't know whether they're going to launch, give me a new app for this. Uh, but it is, well, it isn't even rumored. It is coming soon that this functionality will allow Instagram and messengers um, users to come together to communicate across apps. 
on so it says users on instagram will now be presented with an option to update to the new messaging experience once you've switched over to this new messaging experience i think it's going to be link uh, facebook messenger and instagram to start with but there's rumors that whatsapp will come into this as well you're going to be able to communicate across instagram and messenger together um, you're going to be able to send disappearing messages hello snapchat you're going to be able to create boomerangs, um, easily forward messages. Essentially, it's bringing it all into one inbox. Not sure how I feel about this personally, but I do think this is going to be fantastic for brands and businesses. I know the community management of Instagram DMs is already tricky enough. So to bring that into one platform, hopefully they'll give you a desktop option as well, should really help with the ability to manage your, your communities um, in a lot easier way. And then Facebook accounts section. So I've had to do some key takeaways on this because again, brand new, hot off the press. My colleague Sally flagged this to me just recently that um, Facebook are launching a new account section to better connect its cross data and payment systems as part of its recent shift to e-commerce. So going back to what I was saying about commerce manager coming, this is also something that I'm presuming people personally will need to have and also businesses will need to have where they can control everything in one place so key takeaways from this are um, cross posting so posting across all your different family of apps facebook pay info so you're going to be able to have a wallet in there to be able to buy things through whatsapp through instagram and through facebook and then logging in across all of your accounts in one place not quite sure why we need an account center and a Facebook business manager, but I'm presuming business manager will be businesses and account center is going to be for personal usage. But I will send everyone my latest news update on that for everyone to have a read through, but that one's hot off the press. Finally, I'm going to finish on something a little bit more creative and I'm going to touch on some of the updates um, and some things that have been in place for a while regarding adverts and using stories in your adverts so I really liked this creative and it was a reminder to us all we've talked about everything from a functional point of view but we are on social media channels and uh, we do need to keep that in mind that um, we're there as storytellers they're called stories for a reason and it's because as marketers it's our responsibility to make sure that we are engaging in these platforms in the way that they were intended they're not advertising platforms they're there for people to to escape to follow their friends to be entertained and to be inspired so i am finishing on um an innovation around adverts but it was just a little reminder to make sure we're staying creative during this time so story adverts the key takeaway from this is that they're now available um, during igtv videos as well um, so you can now have up to 120 seconds worth of a story, um, a story ad. So stories typically are only 15 seconds long, but if you create an advert, it allows you up to 120 seconds. Other things to mention are 60% um, of ads are viewed with sound on, so make sure you are making the most of the audio elements that Instagram do provide for you. And I've used this example as well because the... Um, the story ads that you can create also allow some of the new sticker functionality we talked about. So at the moment, you can use a swipe up, you can use the poll, which I think is a really nice story, a way to engage people. But I can only imagine that those other story functions that we talked about, like the countdown, the donation sticker, um, and you know the hashtag challenge, I'm hoping that some of that nice functionality will also make its way into ads. So it feels a lot more engaging for your audience. I could talk and talk and talk for hours, but um, I think I'm doing a cave of time. I'm going to wrap up there. And just my final thought before I, me and Joe talk through any questions that you guys might have. Um, we've talked about some tactical things here to implement straight away, um, some quite strategic things, some, some new platforms to consider. But at Digital Cake, we, we follow a three-step methodology, and I didn't want to just talk tactics without touching on strategy really. So I'm a big believer that before you try anything new on your social media, you really lay your foundations. And what I mean by that is you really understand who your customers are, what the purpose is, what your objectives are, 
understanding um, what you're trying to achieve before we say build your brand house, which is make sure you've got your website in order. If you are using any of these lovely new functions to drive people to your site, make sure that when they get there, that they have a great experience. And finally, once you've built your brand house and that's in order, only then would I suggest that you move to social media and start to invite people in by driving that traffic back to the website. So I thought I couldn't go a whole webinar without talking a little bit of strategy. And just want to say thank you so much for everybody that's listened and that's joined and for Joe that has invited me here today. Um, as we mentioned, Social Circle does take place every month. So if you've enjoyed listening to all those new innovations, then expect more of the same on our monthly catch up. I also do a podcast with a lovely lady called Sally Hawksford. So we wrap up all of those innovations monthly over on our podcast too. And that is everything from me. So um, usually at the end of Social Circle, we say we open up the, we open up the circle to questions. So I'm going to do the same with you, Joe, and, and open up. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much, Kirsty. There have been so many questions that have come in. And uh, I don't know whether you're able to see them as they're, as they're coming in when you're sharing your screen or not, but there's a whole bunch of people saying thank you right now. <laughs> and Good. even... Uh, Oh, to be fair, it is James commenting on uh, on your pink uh, jumpsuit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we managed to join. That's good. Absolutely. So we, we've got about seven minutes. So I think okay. we're going to have to do a quick fire uh, question and answer session. Um, but first of all, thank you so much as well, Kirsty. No problem. I'm sorry I ran a little bit over. Not at all. Not at all. And, you know, everyone should be taking the opportunity to check out Social Circle as well, because this is their uh, meat and drink so to speak so uh you know like do not miss the opportunity uh to to, to stay in touch so uh let's do rapid fire okay. uh, no, one... just a quick one shall i stop sharing my screen uh yeah if you yeah. could then uh, yeah great uh, sweet uh so first question from sarah is actually uh slightly tangential to what you uh, presented on but also really important so sarah asks on linkedin and facebook uh what's the order of things that boost the algorithm the most? And she says, likes, comments, or shares. Oh, now this is the thing, they never tell you, they're never straight up. So when I was researching the Pinterest algorithm, it's all a little bit, um, a, a little bit vague. Um, so what gets the most? I really wouldn't know. I th I'd always say comments. I'd always say comments are your most valuable currency just because comments help generate more comments. Um, and also if I was to comment Joe and tag you in it, mm -hmm. you then see that and you can then tag someone else in it. So it does help spread um, far and wide. I also think everybody that comments on your post, please go through and like and comment and respond, you know, um, maybe just a quick, uh, um, just like like the comments are always a really good thing but yeah they don't tell you they mm -hmm. don't tell you which one has the most weight no no, no absolutely fair enough I mean for what it's worth I, I think uh, specific I, I don't know about Facebook but LinkedIn in particular the, the comment comment is is a uh, seems to be the the biggest thing so next one from james uh not not james sandbrook but james proctor who asks uh is duplicating posts on linkedin facebook twitter a good way to amplify your message or does the algorithm harm you i don't think the from an algorithm point of view it would harm you but i always say why would if you are a brand or a business you what you'd want someone to follow you on twitter on facebook on linkedin on instagram and they, you probably wouldn't follow them if they were going to share the same content across every channel. So as a rule of thumb, I would always try and change the message for the channel based on the purpose of that channel. And I know that can be really hard and I'm a, I'm a victim of that as well when I'm feeling a bit lazy and I'm like, well, this could work on every channel. So um, yeah, if, if you are going to use that strategy and put everything across every channel, just make sure you're aware of the nuances of each of those channels. So the if you're going to app mention somebody, they might have a slightly different username on that channel. Um, you, the amount of hashtags that you can use on that channel, for instance, you know, hashtags aren't really, I wouldn't recommend using hashtags on um, Facebook, but on Instagram, you can have up to 30 and, and that's okay and not frowned upon. So yeah, I would try not to do it 
think about the purpose of that channel. But if you do want to do it, make sure you're just tweaking the post copy so it's relevant for each of those channels. Perfect. Uh, so next one from the Mysterious Anonymous, uh, who says, uh, would you, uh, or how, so, sorry, I'm reading verbatim and, and actually it needs to be phrased slightly differently. So uh, how do you go about ensuring a presence on all the channels uh, when, you know, capacity may be an issue? So how, how do you go about making sure that you provide valuable content on each of these platforms? If yeah, it's, it's a really good question. And I think, um, you need to be where your customers are and where they are the most. So I guess it's a it's a it's a prioritization piece of work. Mm -hmm. um, so some you know people do ask me, is there any point? Because I said a few times, like just get your brand claimed on that channel. But is it detrimental to have an empty channel? It can do because for your reputation, if somebody then goes and has a look on Facebook and you've not posted since two thousand and eighteen, you're not going to look very reliable. And, and up to date um so yeah i would prioritize and then pick top two or three channels based on where your customers are and where you think and also like, like if it is a capacity issue or a resource issue what channels do you enjoy being on you know sometimes people say do i need to have a twitter i don't like it i'm not on it if you're not a natural tweeter <laughs> then it's a really difficult platform because you have to be in it enjoying it joining in on conversations it isn't really a platform you can just join and publish um just tweets like marketing messages it doesn't work like that so think about what naturally suits you in your business as well thank you uh, I'm going to skip ahead to a quick question from Jewel, uh, who says, any recommendations for tools to me uh, measure hashtag reach on Instagram? So Instagram natively, actually, if you go to put the, the word in, so if I put social circle in and um, in the search, and then you can look at accounts and one of them is hashtags. And I think it just tells you how many times it's been used. I think it rounds it up. So it would be like a, a thousand times or 2000 times, but it does actually tell you how many times that hashtag has been used. Perfect. Yeah, so I would just do it natively. Nice. Uh, question from Sarah, who says, do you have examples of where B2B brands are doing modern social platforms well? I feel like LinkedIn is starting to become an echo chamber and a place where people are just trying to go viral. So I guess first half of the question, uh, any examples of B2B brands particularly smashing it on, on social? Yeah, I should have researched this because Hannah got the same question, didn't she? When we <laughs> she <today>. did. <laughs> and she pulled one out of the bag. But um, Joe, you might need to help me with this because I'm, I'm definitely a B2C girl. I don't have any B2B clients, so it's not something I've researched regularly. Uh, but I should probably know from my own experience. Is there anyone you can recommend? I don't know. My de facto, probably from a year ago, to be honest, more than more than today, was always Drift, and and the reason was that um, they used uh, social media channels as a way to amplify their content, which was already best in class. So you know, anything that they did were you know unreal on their website, which was really slick, really easy, really good. Um, but then, you know, they use social media channels after that point to, to sort of amplify that message. So I guess, you know, they were the people that I always uh, went to first and foremost. There are undoubtedly uh, tons and tons of brands. I, I think actually, if I reflect on it a little bit more, um, the, the, the folks that I tend to resonate most with are actually those with strong personal brands behind B2B brands. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is not really something we've spoken about a lot here, but um, particularly in those environments, if we can show humanity, then uh, actually that seems to resonate a whole lot more. And then people sort of get the brand recognition later on as well. Mm -hmm. I think it just sprung to my mind, and I mean, that I've gone big here. I've gone HubSpot and Shopify. Yeah. But like you said, Joe, I think HubSpot, I mean, their whole premise is inbound marketing. So they just use their platforms to amplify their content. Um, so their content strategy, it, it, website first, and then they use their channels to, to help drive back to that to their website. But their content is just absolutely spot on. Absolutely Absolute. gorgeous. Yeah. Absolutely. That's perfect. Right, folks, it, it's got to 9.30 and... Uh, Usually, I, I, I would I'd sit and, and sort of ask questions for the, for the rest of the time. Um, but if I, if I can share a secret between 
Kirsty, me and, and 230 people on the call right now. <laughs> and I've, got, I've got a baby scan to go to. So, <laughs> so I need to uh I need to go. So um oh, congratulations. So thank you. So like uh this is not for social media posting. <laughs> This is purely in this group, but uh, that is going down. So, uh, so I need to go. <laughs> That's so amazing! So, so, yeah. I can see all the messages popping up for you. <laughs> You've made this go viral. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, well, I love you and leave you. Yeah. So, everyone, thank you so much for being here. Honestly. Do not say anything on social media, please, anyone. Uh, so uh, that's going down, but that's happening. Um, thank you, Kirsty. Thank you, everyone, for this amazing, um, you know, this amazing season. I love you all to bits. It's been, honestly, the greatest joy. We'll be announcing season 2.5 in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so that's that's happening. Uh, we haven't got, like, a specific date for it. I'll keep you updated via the newsletter. If you're not on the newsletter, make sure you sign up, check out Social Circle and uh, everyone just have the most lovely day. Uh, thank you, Kirsty. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, love you lots. And uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye.